Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, be before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick confirmation if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Perfect. Thank you for confirmation, everyone. So, my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now. So, before we get started, let me, qu let me quickly introduce our Edurica Masterclass community with you all. So this community of master classes was started back in 2019 and since then we have been closing in to more than 31,000 members so far. So in this community, we conduct multiple webinars more than 100 in a month on different topics, including blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence, on big data and multiple front-end and back-end development technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free of cost. So there are no charges involved here and these webinars are going to be a great platform for learning the technologies that we all are interested in. So to be a part of this webinar group, so we can click on this link which says join this group and then we will be notified with the entire schedule that we have planned for the month. The main agenda for today's session is to discuss on UI path selectors. So if you talk about now UI, so here as a part of discussion, we are first of all going to discuss on what exactly we mean by UI path and the introduction to selectors and how we can work with the UI explorer. And then if time allows, we are going to see a small hands-on on top of it as well. So first of all, if you talk about UI path and UI path has been named as a leader in the RPA market as in robotic process automation and it has been a leader in the market since almost a decade now, then followed by Automation Anywhere. And then we have other vendors, like we have Edgeverb, we have Blue Prism, Nice, and WorkFusion, IntelliBot, Creon. So again, they are available, but again, not having that strong market presence as compared to UiPath. And again, if you talk about the growth, the growth of UiPath, it has been really good so UiPath ranks number one fastest growing company in North America on Deloitte's 2019 technology fast 500 it has been giving a consistent performance and UiPath has been the automation tool preferred by many of the fortune 500 companies including Airbus, NASA, Autodesk, Fujifilm, HP and DHL as well along with other clients and First of all, if you talk about selectors, then to automate the specific actions in the user interface, interaction with other windows and buttons, drop down lists, and many more, such element is required here. So in order to solve this problem, UiPath Studio make use of selectors itself. And because see, at the end, most applications rely on the screen position of UI elements, a method that is not dependable. And that's why we are going to make use of selectors and then we have the selectors are stored the attributes of graphical user interface element and its parent in the form of an xml fragment and most of the time selectors are automatically generated by ui path studio but sometimes this user may have to generate and modify the selectors as well so in order to work on selectors we have to navigate to the section so first of all let me guide you on how we can go ahead and download ui path in case you don't have the access to ui path in your system so ui path is also offered as a community tool that means there is no licensing required in that community edition we can use it for absolutely no cost at all so to go ahead and download that we can refer to this link called ui path community edition so we have to log into UiPath Community Cloud first, and then we can get the access to UiPath once we have logged in. So first of all, using this link, we can register for UiPath Community Edition, and once we register, we can navigate to the right uh, to the right screen available, and then there, from there, we will be able to get the access to UiPath. Or uh, in case you are new, we can also use this for creating a new account as well here here so once we open this link we can either sign in or we can sign up using a new account if you already have the account we can click on sign in and we will be getting the access to ui path automation cloud so here we can continue in the existing organization and then we will be getting the access
So once we have got the access, we can simply click on Download UiPath Community Edition from the right hand. Let me show you how exactly it is structured and where exactly we can find it. So as you can see, this is a screen that we are going to look at. And then towards the right, we have the option of Download Studio. So we can click on Download Studio and then we would be able to get the access to a Community Edition first. And then if you want to go ahead and upgrade the licenses to enterprise and we can do go ahead and do that we will be having the flexibility to run multiple bots at the same time whereas in in this community edition we can run only one single bot in at a one time not more than that now if you want now first of all let's discuss on the selectors and then we are going to see the hands-on so once now first of all we have to scrap the content so now scrapping the content is required scrapping means once we want to let's suppose we have an we have an image that we have defined again we have the website where we want to scrap the from where exactly we want to scrap the content then we have to use the ui elements available under ui path and then only we can get started so before we discuss that so again we need to you make use of ui explorer so for example now if we talk about ui explorer first then it is basically an advanced tool for selectors that allows us to customize the selector for a specific UI element. And it is present in the design tab in the top ribbon. So once we have installed UiPath, then this is the dashboard that we are going to look at. And we can start by creating a new sequence, a new process, or we can explore the library where we may have multiple elements saved. And then we can make use of templates where we can save templates having different set of configurations defined that can be used as a base for other projects. So for now, we are going to get started working on process. And here we can name it as any process. Click on create. So here a process is being created where we can define any automation that we want to be applied for the project. So as you can see, this is a screen. Now in the left sidebar, we can see the list of all the activities that we can include for automating any task. And then here in this section, in the top section, we have the ribbon available for design and for debugging. So on a design, we have recording. So recording is basically used to record any activity that we want to perform. Screen scrapping is used for scrapping the content available from any specific image or any portion of the screen as well. So for example, let's say, here we have, now for example, suppose we want to scrap something from any of the website. Suppose here we can navigate to, let's suppose UiPath itself. So if you want to scrap a content available from anywhere, for example, from any image or from any website, so we can use the concept for screen scrapping. I suppose even if the content is available from, suppose from uh, in the format of any images or any specific elements, then we can scrap it, for example, we have this video. So here we can enable screen scrapping. Now suppose here we want to scrap the content available here in this area. So once we scrap it, so in case there are some text available in that area, that is going to be scrapped and that is going to be given to us as a response automatically by UiPath. So again, we can start scrapping again. Let's suppose here we want to scrap this area here. So here we can simply scrap it. And in case there are any text content available, this can be an actual website, this can be an image. So that means wherever on the screen, if there is a text content available, that is going to be scrapped and that is going to be given to us. Then we can simply copy and reuse it anywhere we want. And then we also have the option of data scrapping. So this is going to scrap the data from anywhere which may be available from the screen itself. For example, we want to scrap this content. So you can scrap it. And then if you want, you know, suppose if we are going to scrap different content having the same pattern, for example, now this is mostly useful for scrapping the data from e-commerce stores. For example, we want to store the product name of each and every of the supposed 1200 products being listed. So instead of doing that manually one by one, we can scrap the content from that, from, from that particular e-commerce store and save it by using the data scrapping method available under UiPath. So we don't have to go ahead and do those activities manually that can be easily automated. And then we have the concept of user events. So again, in case we want to focus on any specific user elements as in on click event, or we want to focus on the 
key press on mouse click or on click image so we can define these different events suppose here we want to perform some activities on this but particular button so we want that suppose we are automating the process of filling up a form and after the form has been filled we also want them to click the button of submit so that once the form has been filled then we can get the entire form submitted by clicking on the submit action so these all things can be automated and that is what we have these elements available for all right so now we can erase this up now next we have the components of ui explorer that is what we have to focus on so ui explorer basically allows us let's have a first, first of all let's have a discussion on that so it is basically used for advanced to as an advanced tool for selectors that allows us to customize selector for specific ui elements available there so first of all in order to work on ui explorer we have to first of all enable ui explorer and then only we can get started first of all we can go back so here we have to enable the ui explorer in design tab and this is going to be the screen that we are going to look at so now this is the entire explorer section for ui path explorer feeds let's see that in action so that we can get started so here on the top section we have ui explorer so we can click on ui explorer let it open up so as you can see here we have this tab opened up as for ui explorer now let, we can understand each and every of these tabs first of all we have validate so validate is simply going to verify if the changes made in the selector could still be identified as ui element or not and then we have indicate element so indicate it's simply used to indicate a ui element to capture its ui properties and selectors and then we have indicate anchor which is basically useful for indication and selecting an anchor relative to the target ui element and then we have repair so basically it allows to reselect the target ui element and replace dynamic attribute by a simple asterisk which refers to all and then we have highlights so it highlights the target element by bringing it in the foreground and then we have ui frameworks which allows us to select the technology used to determine the ui elements available all right and then towards the bottom we can see something called as visual tree as you can see here here we have what okay we have not tap it so here we have the visual tree available right so in here we have components first first of all if we take a look at this icon then this is basically a highlighter it is used for highlighting the target elements and anchor and then we have the search which is basically going to display the search box and all the search filter options and then we have the entire list so basically when we click on the search option three more tabs are going to be opened up we have search box we have search filters and then we have search only by a given limit so for example if we go ahead and open that so you can see here we have a search by now we can choose any selector as an app title cls url so again these are the available selectors available and then we can also focus on children only selectors so children only means we can search to the first level children or the selected node for example we want to select the first children for let's say class as in series as that we defined we want to select the first children for title then all the children available for the current class have been defined class as in selector defined those are going to be selected by default that's how it works all right and here we have the visual tree now under visual tree we have all the elements defined as selectors right so here in the selector editor panel where we can display the selectors for the specified ui object and allow the user to customize them the top part of this panel shows all the nodes in a given selector and then for example say here we choose one particular selector here suppose here we choose explorer so here we can choose any explorer tools here so under explorer we have these tools and here we have for notepad for the explorer for zoom for powerpoint and we have for sublime text again for the chrome we have these two platforms available that we have these four platforms available right so all the available platform all the available softwares which are up and running applications which are up and running that is going to be defined as a part of tools right 
let's say here we have chrome on ui path right so again for chrome ui path we can see these all elements are available in terms of foreground the visibility path again within ui path we have the head again the associate class foreground in end and again what is the pairing class how many pairing class what is the selected item the subsystem visibility so we can see each and every entity from that particular tab that we open up and again within head again we can see style script so these are we have meta we have link so these all are available types of selectors within the given window that has been currently opened up so basically when i notice selected all the attributes are displayed in the selector attributes and the property explorer panel as well so for example suppose we select any property for example as a part of hands-on let's do one thing for example we have style and now if we use suppose for CSS selectors here so again here we can see the selectors and again in case there are certain attributes available for those selectors and that is also going to be displayed to us as a part of any selector that we have may have selected all right and same way we can be specific for example suppose even in terms of style we have chromium as six path we can choose all the elements so that is how we can define the ui selectors here and now if you want to make use of any specific selectors within that given window so we can see we have four windows so let's choose which window we want to refer to for example let's say here under explorer as well we have the start we have the trade again within start we have the menu bar system we have title bar we have menu bar for application and that again for that particular entry we can see all the properties being visible and suppose here we want to indicate the element manually for example we have this in the element available within this window so you can see we have this button and now that button is going to be captured and then we can see all the values of that particular button that we have captured here as in the ui class the net ui element here which has been, again this has been a part of the my command bar within that application along with all of their properties and once we are for example here if you want to indicate the element we want to indicate the anchor as well so as you can see here we have now here we can start manually indicating the element and the properties for it is going to be available all right and suppose if you have an anchor that needs to be indicated here then we can choose which all anchor and elements we want to work on and if you want to validate for example if you want to validate based on based on whatever we have selected or modified then we can click on, on validate and then this target element is going to be chosen as a part of working with selectors as we have seen that's, that's how we can simply pinpoint the selectors and we can use it as a part of the project or any or any particular sequence that we are going to work with and here we can choose from multiple automation frameworks as well for example when you're using the framework we can define we want to use the active accessibility or we want to use the ui automation or the default framework given to us by ui path itself and that's how we can make use of ui explorer as a part of adding the sequence in terms of selectors and we also have the option of defining the selectors based on the activity tab for example here we want to define as a as a sequence for creating the image or we want to use certain selectors there then we can define as part of sequence and take screenshots let's say here let's say here we want to create a sequence and we can start by defining sequence from the activity tab so let's say here we can create a new sequence and then once we define sequence let's say we want to put in multiple images we have a application where we want to add multiple images here right so now this can be taken up as an input or this can be taken up as a given sequence or any element we want to want that we want to define for example let's say here we want to scrap the content so here we can simply define the content suppose here we want to save image or take screenshots so here we can add a take a screenshot in the time in the terms of sequence now suppose here we want to take a screenshot so here we can define in the right sidebar we can see we have the properties defined as target so in the target we can define which all selector we want to use if you want to add a vb expression then we can define it or we can simply open this up in advanced editor 
So same way we can suppose here we want to select a specific element for which we want to take a screenshot. For example, we may have a website. Let's say we open the link for Eureka UI path so we can open this up link. Now within this, for example, in an image, in a given image, we may have the option of choosing, for example, let's say any going further for any specific details and for that we need to take a screenshot. So what we can do, we can go back to our process that we are working on and here we can click on indicate elements. For example, suppose here we want to take the, the for example, take the entire element as this one. So here we can see the entire selector has been used. So even if the content changes, for example, we may have a requirement, for example, this may be a lottery based website. And now we want to ensure that whenever the new lottery images or the whenever the new element is being displayed, we may have a slider and new image, new content is going to be displayed here every one hour, every two hours. Same thing we can do for any e-commerce section as well. So we have deals of the hour, right? So if we, or we have frequent deals or we have lightning deals, so that is going to be updated. And then we can define the element as in the selector is going to be the same whereas the content within that selector is going to get changed, correct? So we can define the selector and by using the selector we had defined okay, we are going to fetch this what what is the title, the Chrome and the CSS selector is body, section and division. And then the selector ID that we defined here, if you want to customize this, then we can customize this as well. And as you can see here, if you want to make changes to the selector as an app title and the CSS selector is going to be body and the section, then we can define it. Suppose if we want to be specific, for example, here we may have a class for this element, right? As you can see, we have div class and we know, okay, we want to define this class itself. So here we have defined the div class as a part of UI path custom eight. So we can also use this class and we can define the entire class as a selector as well by modifying the selector back in a UI path. Right, for example, suppose here in terms of web control, we have defined the body. Suppose here we want to define a class. So here we can define class and within class, we can define which class you want to refer to. For example, we have call G, right? So here we can be specific. Okay, we want to define this call G class that has been that we have copied. All right. Thank you so much for joining and have a great day ahead. Take care. Bye bye.